Hello everyone and welcome to another Unraid Monthly Digest for the month of September. And I'm your host, Stefano Partida. No you're not, get out of here, this is my show! Let's get started. In the previous digest, I had already announced to you that Unraid 7.2 Beta 3 was available. However, on October 1st, Release Candidate 1 became available, so instead, we're going to talk about that. With this latest release, of course, they have added the responsive web UI, which you would have seen in the betas, but if you wanted to wait till the release candidates, that is now available. There's also the built-in Unraid API, where the community drives their feature requests, and there's also a bounty program where you, yes, yourself, can actually develop code for this API and get a monetary award and or community recognition. Raid Z expansion has also been added so you can grow the size of your Z pool one at a time without taking your array offline. There's expanded file system port for EXT and TFS and XFAT. This is great, so if you have a Windows system that uses NFTS, you can now take that drive and put it in your Unraid array and it will also be parity protected. SSO and OIDC login has been enabled in the web UI so you can use your unraid.net account or any third party OIDC provider. There have been dashboard and web UI enhancements like the CPU usage stats now come from the API, uh, new notifications and management. There's a bell icon that will display those. Force install buttons for plugins, countdown timer on login lockouts. Uh, open terminal tool has been added under tools, which is a nice change. Numerous fixes to alignment and pops up, pop ups and dark mode. For the VM and networking improvements, we have virtual sound card support now, uh, better multi monitor support, VM manager. Now warns if PCI hardware assignments change and Docker IPv6 custom networks now support ULAs. A couple of other cool features that have been added one of which is eMMC support. That's really cool, so that means you could have really fast storage for a cache pool probably. And then we also have the, uh, or Unready has the ability now to auto authorize Thunderbolt 4 devices. So that's pretty nice to have. Also don't forget Riser FS is deprecated now and that will no longer be supported. You should see a notification in the web UI if you are running that and hopefully none of you are. And of course, before updating from the betas to the release candidates or really at all, always update your Unraid plugins, especially the Unraid Connect plugin and any NVIDIA driver plugins that you might be using because there could be some conflicts there when upgrading versions. So be sure to upgrade your plugins first. A new USB creator tool has been released, so that will make deployments much easier now. But wait a minute, you're saying we've always had one. Well, not on Linux you haven't, and now it's totally available, so anyone that is using Linux can now use a tool to make deploying Unraid that much easier to your USB devices. As you may have noticed, Ed, aka Space Invader 1, is now here in America. And while I can't tell you exactly why he's here just yet, there has been some content that's already been posted online where him and I are on the Unleashed show, and we just talk about some things that we find interesting and really just catch up with each other because we haven't seen each other for two years. And you can expect some more content on his channel as well. Uh, if you're at all interested in that, be sure to keep your eyes peeled. Get liked and subscribed to Space Invader 1 on YouTube as well as like and subscribe to this kind of content if you enjoy it. So that way you don't miss anything at all. With all that being said, I want to thank all of you for watching and good night. Cool.